So students, this video is going to be about the horizontal mask tool and uh, it's part of a little assignment that I like to call word-word combo where, where two words are um, used with images in a piece and hopefully the, the message or the um, whatever communication occurs um, between viewer and, and object is, uh, is one of interest and tension. So I want to point out one thing before we begin. This uh, piece uh, says calm down on it and there, th one of the th features of it is that there's this explosive scene behind the words themselves have this um, peaceful serene sky in the background. Without that layer one you'll notice that there are no pixels anymore there and that's because the horizontal mask tool selected this, the pixels of on this fireworks image and deleted them. I can no longer modify that um, using the hor horizontal type mask tool. The, uh, there's no way to kind of select what I had selected before. So that layer is destroyed. I don't have access to that fireworks layer anymore. So what I encourage you to do is work non-destructively, have your original image on its own layer, even if it's invisible, have it accessible so that you can make any corrections that you need to later on down the line. So let's give this a shot. You're going to go to File, New, Blank File. The size that I've got for the uh, the frames that we're working with is going to be 7.75 wide, 9.75 inches tall, and that'll fit inside the mat of the frame that we're going to be using. And press OK. White background is fine. Generally, when you get into this white background business, it's best to unlock that in case uh, it just, it'll just it cause problems later. So just unlock it right away. Bring that up to the orange line to maximize the view. First things first is you've had to plan in advance which two words you're going to use. I'm going to use the words smooth and aggression. Uh, just because I sound, I think they sound kind of interesting together. Uh, that's a, a complicated idea. And we need to get we need to choose two different types of picture or um, pixel content whatever kind of stuff we're gonna have in the text itself in behind the text to make it look interesting so for the word smooth I think I'm gonna go with something rough and pebbly in Google image search look for images if you're gonna respect the those creators I know we're at a school so we have some creative license here because we're not selling things but the usage rights, it's nice to just see what is labeled for use and use one of those. Uh, I like this kind of whatever it is, three-quarter P gravel or something. Um, and uh, click on view image to see the, the full thing. You can see because that plus sign inside the magnifying glass means there's a lot more to this image than, than just this uh, side of it. So go to copy. The bigger image, the better. Uh, and in your format here, you can press Control v for paste. And using the move tool, you can see actually how big that that image is. You can, we we have enough room to resize it. To uh, we don't need the whole thing to be rocks, but um, let's just see what what happens if it is if the entire texture of of the pieces is is, uh, is these pebbles. So to teach you, I'll, I won't take too much of of your time with it, but the horizontal type mask tool is essentially a way to make a selection shaped like the desired letters. So if I'm doing let's say impact the really the the more slab serif or the more large and, and decorative like impact or uh, um, Gilson's ultra bold you know these these big ones that have a lot of space in them um, the larger that letter the more space you'll be able to see through it. So let's begin our uh, text here. I'm going to type the word smooth. It's much too small, so highlight that text. Change the size. Still too small, so we're going to have to do it manually. Let's say, I don't know, 150. Mm, close, 135. That's probably close enough for... Actually, let's go down to 120 just to make it look all right. Okay, 
This can be moved around by holding control and moving it into position. And if I press the green check mark, it will confirm that that's exactly what I want. So make sure you do all of your adjustments to that text before you press the green confirm check mark. So what I've essentially made, I haven't made text, I have made a selection shaped like text. And if I press delete, for instance, we would be able to see the white from layer 0 through layer 1. And control D to deselect. So that already looks good um, and might be cheeky enough in its contrast of meaning and image to, uh, to convey uh, what we want. I'm going to change the color and texture behind that though in front of layer 0 but still underneath layer 1 so that it, it comes across like maybe a nice kind of flush type of sand uh, like that kind of whitish Caribbean sand. So I've got my I've copied my image of sand. I'm going to paste it control V and it is almost too small, but that's fine. They won't be able to see too much of that detail. So I'm going to resize it so it fits as many all, all of the letters in there as I can and I'm going to relocate it beneath layer 1 by clicking and dragging. Right now I've deadened the contrast between the word smooth and the rocks behind it so I'll have to modify that um, and consider how that should go later I might change the opacity to bring back some of that uh, that whiteness um, I could also put an, an outline of some kind on it um, but let's just stick with uh, a very subtle kind of texture right now so my next word is aggression um, I need to, uh, I think for this one, instead of selecting a picture to go from, I'm just going to make a, a scratchy type of drawing. I'll create a new layer. And from this layer, I am going to do a scratchy kind of, uh, maybe I'll, I'll do it with a selection tool. So the polygonal lasso tool is uh, a tool that once clicked, um, begins a selection and you can uh, make all sorts of jagged edges. Uh, I'm not totally sure how this will turn out in terms of color but we shall see. I'm keeping in, tr in mind my original starting point which is right here. And it's inside this selection that I'm just going to do a giant blanket of red. Now we are beneath layer 1, that's why that's not appearing. So I think I'm content with that. Let's just deselect and see how that looks. I'll probably need more uh, in order to make this come across as um, solid enough for us to see the word aggression in it. So I'm going to change color and make a new layer beneath that one. Let's pick let's pick something a little a little dirtier. Not a huge fan of that, but for the purposes of moving on with this, I'm going to select both of these layers and merge them. I can right click and go to merge layers, or I can press Control E. And now they're one, one set of pixels. My next word, aggression, I'm going to go back to the horizontal type tool, or sorry, the horizontal mask tool. Uh, I can change the font and. You'll be have to you'll have to be wise about which font you select. I'm I'm gonna select Bodoni because uh, it's an old uh, modern typeface. It's got um, kind of hairline serifs, and it's it's usually used when you want to get a sense of sophistication. And I like that I'm messing up with uh, the idea of aggression and sophistication together. I think that's appropriate in an age where the uh, the 99 percent are um, kind of choked about things. So the uh, size will certainly need to change. 
but we can try at 70 with the word aggression. Let's get a little bit bigger. See if 80 will do. And we'll have to resize this box to make room for that end. Holding control now to move this around. I need to be careful because there's a, a weak spot in the in the red there. We'll see how that turns out. Smooth aggression. And it's on layer three that I want to uh, delete those letters. If I press control D to deselect, you can see um, it down below. Now, I press control Z again. If I haven't deleted that yet, I can inverse this selection by going to select and inverse, which means it's going to replace the pixels that are selected and reverse them so that everything that used to be deselected is now the part that is selected. On layer 3, if I press delete now, now that it's inversed, all I have left, control D to deselect, is that um, layer 3 of aggression. And that can be moved around um, however I want. This will probably need to be darker. And so if I hold down control and click on this layer's thumbnail, I'm going to be able to... Uh, access all of the pixels that are in that layer all at once. And if I wanted to um, burn that color a little bit more, oops, sorry, we're in, in here, this will darken it and give us a little bit more contrast. If I deselect that, we should have uh, a little bit more to work with. However, still that, that N and the G are um, uncomfortably light to me. So I might have to boost that up or even have to be extra sensitive about um, you know, that, that part that I pick um, in order to uh, maybe punch up the letter on that or with a, with a different color or something like that. So Control D to deselect, Control Zero to zoom all the way out. Um, this is good, the, what I'm kind of going for. In this example that I already have up, the uh, the two words that I had were tree and mountain, and as I turn the visibility on for each of these, uh, I made just kind of a design with uh, various polygonal shapes, three sides to make it a triangle, and I made a bunch of triangles, merged those together, um, and I added some layers of dirt at the top and bottom, and... Uh, and which was kind of cool, but the what I thought really turned it from normal to interesting was by changing the layer style of a particular layer layer to something other than normal. I found that multiply was one that I I thought was was uh, I think a, a neat effect. And so layer styles tell Photoshop how to have the pixels on one layer interact with the pixels on the layers beneath it. So pixel colors get multiplied and end up with something darker. Uh, once you have this dialog box selected, you can easily press da the down arrow on the keyboard and kind of cycle through the different options. Uh, and you can get some neat neat effects. Uh, so have fun. That's a, that's a neat ability that Photoshop will give you. And... Uh, and that might add add some interest and beauty to your piece of art. So two words. Um, make your uh, words do some interesting uh, cutouts and meanings by what they're filled with and by what's behind them. And if you're having trouble with, like, the S is getting lost here because of that rock behind it, just zoom in there. It's easy to go to a layer. Um, select on layer 1. Hold down Control, click all the pixels on that layer. Right now, if I use Paintbrush tool, add a new tone in that area that isn't the smooth word, or you could use the Burn tool, and on the correct layer, burn those pixel, pixels down behind it. 